So it's that time of year where we're going to introduce you to the Sinead and Rick's must reads from Eason. Here is our autumn selection. I'm going to start with this. This is uh, Yuval Noah Harari's 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. It's like mouthful on both name and book, and it encompasses everything. Uh, it's a book about where we are in the 21st century right now. It's a book where everything is going, everything from uh, education to global warming to post-truth to education. I said education, it's very important, you should say it twice, to uh, terrorism. Uh, and it's one of those books you come out after at the end going, why didn't I think that way before? And it's rare enough you come across a book like that. His Sapiens, which I think people may have read before, was one of those books for me. And this definitely is. And that's why this one is at the top of my pile. And he has an academic background, is that right? He is. He's an academic in Israel. The first book was written in Hebrew because he thought nobody would read it and it would just be read by a local audience. And now it's one of the biggest selling nonfiction books in the last few years around the world. I think this is going to follow it. It's very good. So uh, one of my picks, which I really love, is The Distance Between Me and the Cherry Tree, which is a crossover book, Adult and Children. Um, it's, it's a little story of a girl who's going blind. Um, the very powerful and moving aspect of this book, I think, is the fact that the author herself is going blind. Um, and it's just kind of about uh, being brave and overcoming adversity and figuring out what really matters in life. Um, a lot of very quirky characters, but a very beautiful and powerful book with a very strong message. I love the idea of books that uh, allow people to read. You call them crossover books, but yeah. they're kind of, they could slightly be YA and they could be adult books because I think yeah. there's so much great stuff that's going on in that space at the moment that people maybe look at and go, no, that's one for the kids. It's not, yeah. it really isn't. And that cover's gorgeous. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful cover. Yeah, and a beautiful cover, beautiful book. So yeah, I loved it, Re a real gem. It's probably not surprising that John Boyne's uh, new book is in this. He's on a real roll at the moment. I love this. I have to say it's brilliant. Hugely. And this is one of the books in the list that, that both of us have read as well. If you like The Heart's Invisible Furies, uh, A Ladder to the Sky is a complicated, wonderful, slightly thrilling story, slightly funny in places story with a great sociopath at the centre of the book that anybody who writes crime fiction um, would be proud of. Um, it's a real, if you haven't had your holidays yet, and if you haven't, congratulations, uh, this is one of those ones that you would bring away with you if you're going somewhere and you lash through it in a few days. Brilliant. Loved it. It's the new John Boyne. It's called A Ladder to the Sky. Totally agree. This is a psychological thriller, The Wife Between Us. Um, Funnily enough, the writer was my previous editor um, in America, so I'm delighted to see she's gone from editor to writer. This is a great psychological thriller. Um, what I love about it is, the the, in the beginning, you're, you're following the narrator and feeling very sympathetic towards her, and then boom, the whole thing twists, and you suddenly, she's completely unreliable. You don't know if what she said is true. There's so many twists and turns. It's, it's a really smart, intelligent, clever psychological thriller, one that you will fly through. I'm taking that. That was my yeah. fine. I haven't read that one yet. This is just lovely, and I love that I stumbled across this book because I've never read any of his work before. His name is William Wall. Uh, the book is called Grace's Day. It's not as if William Wall hasn't written well regarded and well known books before. He's been on the Booker Long List. He's a well known poet. Um, this is a book that I should, in theory, hate because uh, it's one of those books that's set somewhere in Ireland in the past with a family who are poor and miserable. I have certain alarm bells that go off when I hear stories like that because there are a lot of them um, and with a father who's abusive in one way or another. This is gorgeous. I love books that revel in the English language. Uh, there are whole sections of this you'll find yourself rereading again. It's about uh, the father who is an author and who uh, owns this island and has his wife and kids living on the island and then writes books about them living on the island and takes huge advantage of that despite the fact that he's not living there himself and he's living off the fruits of that. He's not a very nice person. Um, uh, if there's one book I could put in people's hands and say, look, it's also it's a relatively short book. I know for some people that's a big deal. The book's only 220 pages long as well. Although you will find yourself rereading passages, so you might take a little bit longer than that. That's the thing about poets writing fiction. I think that every, every word is absolutely meant to be there, so it can be very beautiful. Yeah. Hugely. Uh, it's called Grace's Day. His name is William Wall. Great. Um, Sebastian Fox. Um, I have to confess, I'm a huge fan. Uh, Birdsong is one of my favourite books, top five probably. Um, this is his new book, Paris Echo. Um, again, you know, we, we go, we're going back to the war, Second World War this time. Um, and it's just um, a very, I think, um, book of the moment because it's about um, historical shame and searching for identity. 
Um, he really doesn't hold back. He really um, opens up and talks about the shameful history of France and the way they sent so many of the Jews to concentration camps during the Second World War. And then he also delves into their um, appalling treatment of Algerian immigrants. So it's a very um, timely book, actually, and I think it's one that people will really enjoy and, um, and be quite shocked by. I like it that our last two books are both non-fiction and yet probably could not be more, more different. different yeah. um, Emily Pine's Notes to Self, um, she is an Irish academic, this is her first book, it's a series of non-fiction essays about, um, uh, connected to her and her family, although they are about much bigger topics, they are about things like alcoholism and they are about uh, things like assault and they are about uh, attempting to get pregnant and trying to have a family and huge universal themes that affect a lot of people, if not everyone. Um, I've rarely read something that is as honest as what's in here. Frequently I read this and thought I would never be able to write something that honest wow. about me. Um, it's one of those books that I've seen lots of people talking about as well. It yeah. has generated yeah. a huge conversation in and of itself. Um, hugely worth your while. And again, for those people who care about it, it's only let me get this right, 177 pages long. Um, it is one of my books of the year without question. Uh, it's called Notes to Self by Emily Pine. And it does contrast with your last one. Okay, I'm taking that home. Um, help me. Okay, this is just, um, it's fun, it's funny, but it's also, it's also poignant and quite powerful. Um, anybody who's ever read a self-help book will love this because uh, I'm a self-help book junkie myself. And uh, basically she spends a year reading self-help books and following them to the letter to try and put her life back together because she's in financial debt. Her job's not really going anywhere. She has no romantic life. And just, she's kind of having a crisis really. Um, the great thing about this book is it doesn't, it isn't all wrapped up in a pink bow. It's just life, messy and complicated. Um, but it is a, I know the word journey is overused, but it is a kind of a really fun, moving, um, and kind of very interesting journey that she goes through um, during her 12 months and um, it's interesting to see what happens to her at the end, how she feels. See, I've read this as well and I would have dibsed it if it wasn't on your list already. <laughs> um, and it is one of the things I like most about it is it would have been very easy to have written a book that is very, I've read this book for this month, this book mm. for this month. There is a point in the middle of this book and it's not revealing anything where she essentially has a, has a breakdown yeah. as a result of attempting to do all of the things that are in these books. But again, I don't think we should underplay just how funny it is as well. It is yeah. a genuinely laugh out loud book in places too. And very, very searingly honest. So some, some points are kind of almost wincing, but I love that about it, yeah. And I must say, having read so many books, it was very hard to narrow it down, but we're loving these books and we think you will too.